Well, good morning and hello. Please be welcome to the webinar of the European Regional Association. And our topic today is the European Atlas of Natural Regeneration. My name is uh, Wolfgang Ringer, and I am the president of the U European Regional Association. Just try to... All right, I, th I hope you can see my my presentation and I hope I can use it. Not. But you can try to share it again, uh, Wolfgang. Try well, to. Well, that's uh, what I did. I did. Okay. Uh, I, I, but again, I tried again. I stopped and. Okay. Try again to share it. Please let me know if you can see it. Try now. Mm -hmm. no. Can you see me? No, you can't see my presentation. Uh, we can see only the first slide, but not. Okay. Uh, well, let me try. Um. Let me try again. Okay, so we can see your PowerPoint. Mm -hmm. You can see my PowerPoint, but not yeah. in the presentation mode. Not yet. Mm -hmm. Try. I try. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let me see. I just try mm -hmm. once more. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, this is the first slide. Hmm. Now you can see the first slide, and I will try mm -hmm. to get. Are you okay now? Yeah, okay. Now, now okay. it works. Yeah. Okay. Sorry about this. Um, let me just welcome you again to this uh, webinar on the European Atlas of Radon, uh, European Atlas of Natural Radiation. Um, my name is Wolfgang Ringer, and I'm the president of the European Radon Association. Now the world has changed with the pandemic and the way we work, the way we communicate, the way we exchange information has changed a lot. And I think we all got used <clears throat> to virtual meetings and to video conferences because now they are just an essential and very routine element of our lives. And that's why <clears throat> from <clears throat> the European Regional Association, <clears throat> we decided to to provide webinars uh, on the topic of radon. And for the first uh, webinar of ERA, we truly have a European-wide topic, the European Atlas of Natural Radiation. 
And my special thanks go to our speakers, Giorgia Ginelli and Mark Decourt from the Joint Research Center in Ispra. And I also want to mention that uh, ERA contributed to the Atlas by writing the summaries of the individual chapters. Now, before we go to the presentation from, by Georgia and Mark, I just want to give you some information on the European Reading Association. ERA was founded in 2013. Actually, tomorrow it's the anniversary of the foundation of ERA, and it's, so it's the eighth anniversary. And the purpose of ERA is to serve as a platform for the exchange of information and for networking or for radon experts. And ERA wants to address all radon sectors. So companies dealing with radon measurement or building protection, research facilities, and also authorities. ERA wants to address all these sectors and to include all radon experts uh, in this platform. The European Radon Association is a non-profit international organization which is registered under Belgium law. Now, what are the objectives of ERA? And the first and the overall objective is to assist in reducing the health burden from radon in Europe. And to achieve this, there are different uh, uh, ways to do this and different objectives to achieve this. And one is to promote public awareness of radon. And in 2015, ERA started to promote the European Radon Day, which is each year on the 7th of November. We also have a radon video to explain the topic of radon uh, to the public on our website and also in YouTube in several languages. ERA wants to provide a communication network for all radon professionals and other relevant groups uh, to achieve this pro uh, communication, uh, we have a dedicated website, the website of ERA. We send mailings to the members. We have a yearly workshop on specific radon topics. We organized the European Radon Week. So far, we have organized it in 2018 and 2020. Uh, we launched a journal of the European Radon Association, a very specific journal for radon. And now we also provide webinars on specific radon topics. ERA also wants to encourage to develop uh, quality standards in indoor radon metrology, remediation, prevention, and control technologies. ERA also wants to contribute to education and training in all aspects of the radon field and to assist in the organization of radon, conference, radon conferences. And in the past, Five years, uh, ERA has uh, organized three training courses uh, in 2016, 2018, and 2020. And finally, ERA wants to serve as a pool of experts and a consultative body to national and international agencies. And we had collab collaborations with the International Agency on uh, Energy, Atomic Energy Agency. Uh, we contributed to training and to webinars. And we also financially support uh, the rooms meetings. Now, if you want to have more information on ERA and also on membership, please visit our website. Well, let's get started with uh, the presentation. And uh, you are very much invited to ask questions. And please use the question and answer function of Zoom to ask your questions. And then Valeria Gruber and Jose Luis, they will collect these questions. And if necessary, they will combine the questions and they will ask them to Georgia and Mark after the presentation. And finally, the webinar will be recorded and will be available uh, at, the, at the website of ERA. So if anyone missed the webinar, please inform this person that he can watch the, the video on the ERA website. Okay, that's all for now from me, and I will hand over to to Mark and to Georgia for the presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Wolfgang, for this uh, introduction. And good morning uh, to everyone who is attending this uh, webinar. First of all, I would like to express my gratitude to the European uh, Radiation Association 
for organizing this webinar, but not only for that, but also for having contributed to a large extent to the writing of the uh, European Atlas of Natural Radiation. Georgia will go in the second part of this presentation, will go more into detail on what specific aspects have been dealt with. As you can see from the title, this topic will deal with the European Atlas of Natural Radiation. My name is Marc de Kort, and you can see you can see on the list of authors here that uh, the first three are uh, or have been working for the uh, Joint Research Center of the European Commission. The two of them already retired, so you can deduce from that that the Radon uh, um, group in the Joint Research Center is aging. So fortunately, Georgia is continuing this work. And um, co-authors, I would also like to thank Peter Bosse from the German Federal Office of Radiation Protection and Valeria Gruber of the Austrian Agency for Health and Food Safety for having contributed to large parts also of the writing of the Atlas and contributing with uh, uh, figures and facts, and also for uh, preparing this presentation. This presentation um, will um, start with a historic overview, uh, which I will uh, provide. It will be the first 10 slides of this presentation. It will, a historic, will provide a historic overview because the project has been uh, executed over quite a long time. It will also deal with some rationale why we are doing this work, and then also some background information on the project. Subsequently, we will switch. Georgia will continue with uh, much more details on the technical aspects of the contents of the European Atlas of Natural Radiation. Thank you. Uh, yes, Georgia. Next slide. Thank you. First of all, um, I've been working since I'm retired now, since uh, almost a month. I've been working for more than 31 years for this great organization, which is the Joint Research Center. Maybe not everybody is uh, familiar with this organization. It is uh, Director General of the European Commission, which provides science and knowledge uh, support to the other Director Generals of the Commission. Our work specifically, and that also con uh, concerns the, uh, the project of the European Atlas of Natural Radiation, is support to the Director General of Energy, which is uh, situated in Luxembourg. The Joint Research Center um, is, sorry, can you go one slide back, please? So the Joint Research Center is situated in six sites, so it's quite dispersed. Uh, this is the headquarters in Brussels, and there are five scientific centers, research centers, one in the Netherlands, one in Belgium, one in Germany, one in Italy, in Istra, where Georgia and I and Toro belong to, and uh, Seville in Spain. Yes? Okay, the aims of the Atlas. The... Um, the aims of the Atlas were to provide reference values, but also harmonize data for the further scientific use that could be made of it by the scientific community and national competent authorities. The second uh, reason why we started doing this work is also to address a wider public in order to make it more familiar with what natural radiation or radioactivity is. So there's always a lot said about artificial radioactivity, but it is of course uh, fair to put that into evidence and to inform the general public also about the natural radioactivity, the natural environment in which it lives. It also is there to inform about levels of natural radioactivity caused by the different sources. So it's not only uh, addressed to one specific issue like radon, which is of course the most important part of the Atlas, but also to the other aspects of natural radioactivity. And then we would like to have also or we wanted to also have to present a more balanced view of the annual dose received by the world's population. Yes. Okay, a bit of a history. So we have to go back almost 16 years in time. Um, in 2005, we started with this idea. And of course, the first thing you need to do when you want to make such 
a publication is to see what's already available. So the first thing we did was uh, by means of a questionnaire and also a survey, uh, we um, looked into what is available already on a national level in Europe, in the Europe of 2005. And we concluded that, that many countries had been doing already quite a lot of monitoring work and had their national radon maps, including concentration of uh, radon potentials. But we also um, noticed that the measurement techniques and the strategies, they differed quite a lot between countries. And this is not a criticism to the countries themselves. Of course, this is the result of a national situation. But what could be said was that on an international level, uh, the harmonization and the, uh, let's say, the collaboration could be, uh, could be improved. It was also the use of different mapping methods and visualization techniques in order to present results on a national level. And all these reasons in, resulted in a very colorful patchwork, which you can see on the right hand side of, this, of, the, of the slide, which may be indeed quite attractive as a view, but uh, it's not really very useful on an international level for uh, doing analysis. So a year later then in the, the Radon Conference in Prague in 2006, together with the international community there, we decided to collect statistics of indoor radon data from national authorities on a 10 by 10 kilometer grid. And this 10 by 10 kilometer grid is there for a specific reason. It is a scale or it is a dimension which if you present it on a European scale, you can still see some quite detailed statistical information if you present it on a map. And on the other hand, 10 by 10 kilometer uh, reduces the, or in fact, it uh, uh, avoids the, the problems of uh, privacy. So you're not looking at specific houses, but you're taking averages of that uh, surface element of 100 square kilometer. Yes. Now, why is radon so important? Well, <clears throat> there's a health risk, of course, first, a quite important health risk by indoor radon. And authorities, therefore, attempt to regulate the levels. To this aim, they um, implement radon action plans, which uh, results then in measures to be taken to reduce or to mitigate the risk. Within the European Union, this is led down in the uh, latest basic safety standards. And in there, there is an article 103, which uh, says or gives details about the radon action plan which is obligatory to be implemented by all European member states. For those of you who are interested in the full text of this legislation, you can find it uh, on the right-hand side on the bottom. There is a link uh, where you can download in all the official languages of the, uh, of the European Union, you can download the uh, legal text. One of the actions in this uh, Radon Action Plan is, sorry, can you go back? One of the actions is to find out the geographical distribution of the risk level. So as quantified by the indoor radon concentration as a basis also for deciding which measures to be taken. This means then of course that member states have to perform a radon service and the outcomes have to be communicated to the public, for instance, by present presenting it on maps. Yes. <clears throat> <clears throat> of course, this work uh, required a lot of collaboration on an international level. And in order to make it acquainted and also to raise continuously the issues on how the data should be presented in the European Atlas of Natural Radiation, we organized together with other organizations over the last 10, 15 years, several uh, meetings and international conferences. So you can see from this list that almost on the average every two years, there was an international conference organized. Um, alternatively by GARM, which uh, stands for Geological Aspects of Radon Risk Mapping, which was organized by uh, the uh, company Radon and by the Czech Geological Survey, who were always so kind in order to address some space for us for raising the issues and this, uh, having roundtable discussions 
on the international level with all the experts. And an alternative, we also organized it uh, in uh, Italy, near in the neighborhood of uh, Istra. So by this way, we came gradually to an agreed concept by all the participants, how the atlas was to be uh, proposed and what were the specific mapping techniques, because that was a, a quite an important issue. How do, how, do we, uh, how do we present results in there? Uh, to agree on the procedures for um, publishing then the data which were collected. Yes. Now, indoor radon map uh, is, of course, the most important uh, aspect that we uh, presented in the Atlas, also because it is responsible for, or it leads to uh, half of the natural dose to be received by the public. There are, of course, also other natural contributes, and these also have been addressed in the Atlas. So we can see that also cosmic radiation, uranium, thorium, and potassium in soil and rocks, and terrestrial gamma dose rate have been dealt with. So in order to give a comprehensive picture of the natural radiation to which a uh, population is exposed. Okay. The atlas itself does not only contain, as the word may uh, intend, does not only contain a series of maps, but of course it gives, or it tries to give much more explanation about <clears throat> the uh, aspects of radiation itself. Uh, it goes from a very basic level, starting with what radioactivity is, uh, what the techniques have, uh, that we used for um, the statistical techniques, especially in order to come to the results presented then in the maps. And in fact, you can consider it as an encyclopedia of natural radiation. So it describes the best knowledge <clears throat> on an international level that we have about this, this topic. Yes. Now this slide, <clears throat> of course, um, is I think one of the most important slides of this project. A project like this, which is so vast and uh, so comprehensive, you it's not up to one organization alone to do it. So we could fortunately count on more than 100 experts coming from 60 different institutions, which were universities or research centers, national content authorities in Europe, or international organizations like, for instance, the European Radon Association, or WHO or the Atomic Energy Agency of Vienna, just to name a few. Uh, we, I can only express my sincere gratitude to all the experts who have been working quite hard, very hard even, uh, to uh, make it the result which we uh, have now on the table and which can be ordered either digitally or, or obtained digitally or uh, ordered as a paper uh, bank copy. So, Again, um, this is the most important thing, is the international collaboration of all these institutes in order to come to the result we have now. And therefore, again, our sincere gratitude for allowing us to do that. Yes. The publication of the Atlas was uh, the end of 2019, beginning of 2020. And unfortunately, uh, that was about the time that the uh, COVID crisis um, prohibited us for organizing large events. So we planned quite a lot of events in order to publish the Atlas and to make it, uh, let's say, uh, to give it more visibility. But unfortunately, we had to do it in a much more reduced size by means of, uh, of uh, announcements uh, through different radiation protection agencies in Europe, uh, also by um, uh, making some webinars and uh, to, a certain, to, to a large extent, fortunately, we succeeded in uh, making it, uh, let's say, more visible. And again, uh, you can see here some results, some extracts from websites of national authorities who were so kind to uh, publish uh, the, uh, the availability of the Atlas. One specific, uh, specific uh, event is on the next slide, where the Natural History Museum of uh, Vienna um, had a webinar 
in order to announce the opening of a new permanent exhibition uh, on radioactivity from natural uh, sources and related to the geology, of course. Uh, the Natural History Museum in Vienna is, uh, has a very nice, very fine collection on uh, uh, radioactive minerals, uh, uranium ores, for instance, uh, which you can see in the bottom uh, fig, uh, picture. And um, the, we provided information to them, but they, they also collaborated with us. So it was an exchange of information on uh, maps of uranium concentration in soil and cosmic radiation. So we are very grateful also to the Natural History Museum of Vienna when they made this uh, webinar, uh, because they allowed us to, uh, and they made quite a lot of publicity for the availability of the Atlas. So again, um, many thanks for uh, the, the Natural History Museum in Vienna for, for doing so. So this, I think, gives um, an overview of what the project was, why we did it, uh, how, how we obtained the result. And we will now start by showing um, a short movie, which we prepared in order to give visibility to the Atlas. We're explaining to, in very general and simple uh, uh, words what it is about, what radiation is about. And then Georgia will continue with the more technical details of the contents of the Atlas. Humans are continuously exposed to ionizing radiation from several natural sources, these being high energy cosmic rays and radionuclides generated during the formation of the universe, which are still present in the Earth's crust today. Natural radionuclides migrate within the environment via different pathways air, water, rock soil and the food chain to then enter the human body through ingestion via food and drinking water and inhalation causing internal exposure. External exposure is caused by cosmic radiation and radiation from terrestrial radionuclides present in soil, rocks and building materials. The largest proportion of the effective dose received by the world's population is constituted by natural radioactivity, of which radon and its progeny account for more than half. However, the contributions may vary significantly within regions and per person. Radon is a colorless, odorless and radioactive noble gas descendant from uranium. Radon is the second cause of lung cancer after smoking. The main risk posed by radon is not the gas itself, but its decay products. They attach to aerosols, thus increasing the chance of inhalation, and are easily trapped by lung tissues. As radon forms by radioactive decay inside mineral grains, some of it escapes into the pore space and migrates to the atmosphere or water. Indoors, radon can reach elevated levels due to three main sources underground soil, building materials, and water. European regulations stipulate legally binding standards to ensure that individuals are appropriately protected against exposure to indoor radon. To gain a clearer overview of the natural sources of radioactivity, the Joint Research Center of the European Commission launched the European Atlas of Natural Radiation with the collaboration of more than 60 institutions. The Atlas is an A3 book with 190 pages. Intended as an encyclopedia of natural radioactivity, the Atlas describes the different sources of this kind of radioactivity and represents the current state of knowledge on this topic. It also contains maps of Europe that show the levels of natural background radiation originating from various sources. Furthermore, it provides reference values and makes harmonized datasets available to the scientific community and national competent authorities.
good morning. Uh, I hope uh, that uh, you enjoyed the video. And uh, in addition to the English version, it is available uh, in another five languages, uh, Italian, French, Dutch, German, and Spanish. And uh, in this uh, website, uh, you can uh, download in uh, MP4 or in other format the videos. And uh, um, so if you are interested also to share, uh, to disseminate uh, content about natural radiation, you can uh, please go on this website and download them. You can find how to get the atlas. You can find all the information at the Ramon website in which you can explore uh, the online version and the, you can download the publication. Uh, the publication you can download both in PDF or EPUB, the full uh, book, or you can uh, download separately each chapter. Moreover, you can order a paper copy free uh, through the U bookshop at this uh, uh, link. So uh, let's describe more in detail the maps, uh, some of the maps contained in the maps. And uh, let's start to, with the European indoor radon map. And uh, to develop uh, this map was a long uh, process. In 2007, uh, GRC started uh, to collect uh, data from the first uh, six countries. And uh, little by little, after 30 years, uh, we have 36 countries that joined the project. The last one is uh, Moldova in December 2020. And uh, so what... Uh, um, we collect is uh, indoor radon concentration measured at the ground floor in living uh, rooms. Participants uh, send us uh, statistics uh, over 10% kilometer grid. Uh, some example of statistics is listed here, like arithmetic mean, standard deviation, the median, the number of original measurements per cell. And uh, um, you can see in this uh, map, the, this map reports the number of measurements per cell. And uh, um, this is uh, the update uh, version in uh, 2020. This map is uh, available online uh, because the, publish, uh, the, the, the atlas was published in 2019, so the map uh, in uh, as uh, for example does include the Moldova and uh, um, we can see that there is um, uh, we have a, as we said before 36 countries with uh, around 29,000 non-empty cells and with a median of uh, the measurement per cell that is 4 and we can notice that this is a big range from a uh, cell that has one, only one measurement uh, until to a cell that has uh, around 24,000 uh, measurement in the UK. And uh, uh, so we collect uh, statistics from more than uh, 1 million uh, original measurement. This map instead uh, reported the arithmetic mean in each cell and uh, the arithmetic mean of the arithmetic mean of each cell in Europe is uh, 104 becquerel per cubic meter and the percentage of cell above uh, 300 becquerel per cubic meter is around uh, uh, four point five percent and the percentage of uh, cell with a arithmetic mean above one hundred becquerel per cubic meter is around 
35 percent. This is uh, uh, let's change uh, map. This is uh, the map uh, of uh, estimated total concentration of uranium in topsoil over Europe. This map has been uh, developed using two uh, um, European databases, Forex and GEMAS, and uh, we harmonize uh, the data, and the data was uh, uh, interpolating using uh, orbital cridging, and uh, this is uh, the result, uh, this map. And uh, similar to the uranium map, using the same uh, databases, uh, we, develop, uh, we developed also map of thorium and potassium. And this map are uh, um, from the, the Atlas publication. But you can find the same map also in the online version of the Atlas, in which you have a short description of the map, uh, the methodologies, the references, and you can zoom on the map until uh, the resolution uh, um, for example, for this map is the resolution 10 per 10 kilometer as the indoor map. Um, this is uh, the um, European annual cosmic radars map that reports uh, the, the dose uh, in microsievert that uh, a person may receive from uh, cosmic radiation at uh, ground level. And uh, uh, this is a reflected elevation uh, map. As the map uh, mm, that I showed before, this is the version that is available online, but uh, you have also the map uh, available on the Atlas publication. So we want to provide some uh, example of using Atlas data. Uh, that can be found in two European projects, uh, Metro Radon and Trace Radon. And uh, these are MPA projects uh, from a European Metrology Program for Innovation and Research, organized by Euromet and uh, co founded by the European uh, Union's Horizon 2020 program and uh, the MPA participating states and um, about uh, Metro Radon, uh, the project uh, finished in November 2020 and uh, uh, we can see that uh, um, in this uh, project uh, the, um, a lot of uh, activity were developed from the development of novel procedure for the traceable calibration of radon measurement uh, until to identification of uh, radon priority area. So a large range of activity were, were involved and uh, all the deliverables and the reports uh, are available uh, on, from the Metro Radon website. And uh, the, we focus on the concept of the geogenic radon hazard index that uh, use uh, like uh, different geogenic quantities to estimate the contribution of geogenic to indoor radon. Hence, uh, the geogenic radon hazard index um, can, could be a possible, a possible tool to identify the radon priority area. In this paper that uh, we report here, uh, also the reference, um, developed during the, the Metro Radon project, um, the concept and definition of the geogenic radon hazard index are summarized and uh, trials of European map, uh, maps have been uh, developed. And uh, like uh, this uh, uh, mm, one of the map has been developed using uh, multivariate uh, regression. 
the left map, while the right map using uh, machine learning. Um, the interesting thing is uh, that uh, in both methods, uh, the target variable is the arithmetic mean of the logarithm of the indoor radon concentration that uh, I showed before uh, of the European indoor radon map. So uh, the data from the ATAS uh, was uh, very useful uh, to develop these uh, two maps. Let's uh, see how Atlas data are used uh, for Trace Radon project. Trace Radon project just started in June 2020. And uh, in this project, Radon became uh, an issue in climate uh, observation because with Radon activity concentration and Radon flux measurement, greenhouse gases flux uh, can be traced. Why ra use radon to do that? Because um, uh, greenhouse uh, gases uh, flux are uh, difficult to measure. So, and uh, radon is very helpful in this uh, context. Two networks uh, could benefit from outdoor radon measurement that are the ICOS that provides uh, standardized uh, and open greenhouse gases concentration in atmosphere and it collects data from more than uh, 140 measurement stations across uh, 13 uh, European uh, countries and uh, uh, of course ICOS could uh, benefit about uh, radon uh, flux measurement um, and uh, also for also the issue of estimating the greenhouse uh, gas uh, fluxes. And also the Eurodef uh, network, that is the European Radiological Data Exchange uh, platform, in which uh, data of uh, uh, mostly of uh, gamma dose rate measurement are exchanged almost in real time can benefit because um, we uh, could better understand the radon uh, washout peak that um, can be misleading in the interpretation of the gamma dose rate uh, measurement. And so, but in detail, the, um, in the model to develop the radon flux map for the project, the map of the uh, uranium uh, in uh, soil uh, developed for the European Atlas of Natural uh, Radiation is used uh, together with other input uh, uh, component input param parameter like uh, um, soil moisture or other uh, porosity from the European soil database. So uh, these are two examples to show the, how um, are important this data uh, collected, uh, maps collected in the atlas at the European level. And so I thank you for uh, the attention and uh, thanks also to Annette and you uh, to provide me support for the Trace Radon project. Well, uh, thank you very much, uh, Georgia, and thank you, Mark, for this uh, presentation. That was was very impressive, and congr congratulations for for that achievement. And I think it really is an achievement. Uh, there's so much work behind this uh, publication, and yeah, you you should be proud of of it. And all of those who contributed to this uh, atlas should be proud of it. I can see there are a few questions so far. Uh, regarding the European Atlas of Natural Radiation. Valeria and Jose will ask now these questions to, to Georgia and Mark. Please, be, please feel free to, to ask more questions. Uh, it's now the opportunity to ask the authors. Please, Valeria and Jose. Uh, hi, uh, can you hear me? Good morning, yes. everybody. Uh, yeah, uh, there are uh, several questions, so we can start. 
uh, with a question regarding, uh, I, I, I understand from the question, it's, it, it concerns the radon uh, priority areas. So the participant is asking, uh, I mean, it's uh, recalling that uh, according to the European legislation, these radon priority areas uh, have to be defined. So the question is if there is a European map for this type of areas, similar to the map provided by the BFS. So, um, so what, uh, so what we did uh, for the APAS is a map that uh, reflects mostly the geogenic uh, uh, radon potential because we are considering only data from ground floor. This map uh, um, is a way to, to show to, to the public and also data that can be used for other purposes as, uh, to, to study the geogenic uh, hazard radon mix. But this map has not the, um, the ambition to um, estimate the radon priority areas. This is a tool of the uh, national authorities, national country. So uh, are two different things. So for example, the national authority to develop uh, their map can use input from the Atlas as the uranium, as other input, but uh, um, this map, it's uh, something different from uh, radon priority area. It's only to give an idea about the, it's more linked to the geogenic radon because it's only, but it's not a map of risk, absolutely, and it's not a map that can be used to um, estimate the radon priority area. That is a tool of the national authorities. Thank you, Jacques. So thanks, Georgia. Um, we have also a, a few questions related to the availability and possibility to use uh, the material of the Atlas. So in specific um, about the resolution that the, in the download version, the resolution of the, the uh, figures or maps is quite low. So if it would be possible to have it in a higher resolution and also about the availability the availability of the data itself, if they would be available for research projects and, and so on, and if it's possible to use them. So, um, so we already shared, uh, like for example, with the um, Historical Museum of Vienna and the uh, other group uh, map uh, at higher resolution. Uh, so if you need, uh, please uh, contact us and then we will provide you the map set higher resolution. About all the material, you can use uh, um, it. Uh, all uh, properly cited. So please, properly cited when you use material from the Atlas. And uh, about the other question also, um, if uh, we will uh, in the future we will uh, we are working on to put in the grc data catalog all the maps available in uh, raster or in a shape file so in the near future this map will be available uh, in the meantime please contact us if you need this map but uh, for the indoor radon map we cannot uh, provide the data because the ON are the national authorities. So maybe we can, uh, depending on the, the project, uh, we can discuss uh, together and then we can see if we contact the authorities uh, and if the authorities uh, agreed, uh, we, we can provide you data, but uh, for all the other maps, they are free and they will be free at the GRC data catalog soon. For the indoor radon map, these are data of the national authorities. So we can discuss, but you, you will need 
the authorization from them to use them. Um, yeah, uh, there are more questions. It seems that the participants started to add questions and more questions. So uh, yes, uh, maybe two questions that can be answered together. Uh, one is regarding uh, read on exhalation measurements from soil. And the participant is asking if there is any progress with the standardization of this type of measurements. As far as I remember, there is an ISO standard on this particular topic. Uh, but the other, there is another question about uh, uh, permeability that, uh, as you know very well, is uh, it's in, an important parameter in order to deter determine uh, geogenic radon potential. So the, the participant is asking if this parameter is included in the atlas or not. So um, let's uh, answer to the this la last question about permeability. Uh, a map is shown uh, only in the online version, a map of the permeability, but this permeability is, has been uh, um, estimated using the, um, the fine fraction. So you can go on the online version and see, but it's not the best way to estimate the, the permeability. So in the, in the Atlas publication, we will not include this map that is only available uh, online. And uh, the other question was about exhalation of radon. So uh, please uh, follow the, the progress of the Trace Radon project because uh, Trace Radon is a project based on radon flux. So on the exhalation and also and on the methodology. And uh, so I suggest you to, to follow the, the progress of uh, Trace Radon to, to be also update about the radon flux uh, exhalation uh, and uh, also about the, Okay, this is also the part about outdoor, but you can have uh, more information on this. About in the address, there are only one uh, part uh, dedicated to the, there are uh, literature review references about uh, exhalation, but uh, we don't have still now any maps that are being developed using, during trace travel. So thank you, Georgia. Um, we have also, besides that, we have a lot of comments which congratulate you to the good work. Um, is there also a plan to update the Atlas as new data or maps become available? And if so, in what frequency is it planned to do so? So um, as uh, I mentioned during the presentation, the indoor radon map, for example, has been updated in September, uh, in December 2020. So uh, the indoor radon map will be updated, I think, uh, yearly, as soon as we receive from uh, the country or new country that we join, or we will receive uh, update uh, data set from uh, the country that uh, are already in. So uh, I think that about indoor radon will be yearly. About the others, um, like uh, uranium, thorium, potassium, uh, only if uh, we will find new database to update this, this map, uh, maybe in the future will be updated. Otherwise, I think that uh, these uh, other maps, like the cosmic, I don't see the point to update uh, them only if something will uh, appear in the meantime. Um, yeah, uh, now, uh, Georgia, so we have some questions, more practical questions about the radon maps uh, of the Atlas. So, uh, yeah, uh, maybe you can comment. I think you already mentioned that in your presentation that the measurements were done uh, uh, in the ground floor. Uh, but can you comment a little bit more about this, if all the countries provided measurements in the ground floor or first floor, 
uh, a little bit about if the number of cells in different countries, I mean, if it is different or it's the same type of cells. So can you say a little bit more about the technical details of this type of, of measurements? So um, what we request to the national authorities uh, was uh, to provide the data from ground floor and uh, annual uh, average. So uh, long-term experiment representing the annual. So, and then we uh, asked the information about the quality of this measurement through some uh, questionnaire. And uh, we discovered that uh, maybe some country provide data uh, with uh, three months of measurement, but uh, it's important that, that, all that, that for them, they are representative of the whole year. And uh, about the ground floor, we trust the data of the, the data providers. So we cannot have any control, but uh, and it, it is what uh, they are uh, providing. I think that they are filtering from their database only data from ground floor. And about the measurement technique also are different, but uh, the mostly are uh, with each um, track detector. So the majority, I think, I have to check the questionnaire, but we <laughs> approximately all are performing the measurement using each uh, track detector. So, so we would want have have one more question about the natural radioactivity concentration in in water. If it's planned to extend the atlas also for radon included in this, this uh, was a nice uh, topic also discussed. Uh, I think a couple of years ago um, with uh, get colleague that they are performing. Uh, like uh, protein test and this is a good point and uh, we are exploring also the possibility to collect data about uh, radon in water for example using uh, other system that uh, like uh, REM radio radioactivity environmental monitoring databases that is uh, a tool in which all the European countries submit radiological data, environmental radiological data, to include maybe in the future also the possibility to um, submit uh, radon uh, in water, in drinking in water, that now they are also the, the directive, and then this could be an idea to, to submit data, to receive data through other channels. But um, let's discuss uh, and let's see how to best collect this uh, data that are available because now uh, more, more uh, the radon in water data are uh, uh, measurement are performed. Uh, yeah, one more question, Georgia. It's about uh, the use of the of the map. So, if there are plans at the GRC to use this as a tool for educational projects with students or the schools or this type of things, I mean, to get these uh, young uh, generations more involved on 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 radon. Yes, I think that uh, we think that it's um, the. As an example, we receive a lot of requests for the atlas for educational purpose. Like this is, was uh, very good. And uh, at GRC also we are running a project with the European school and in which uh, we go there, we provide the radon detector to the student, they go at home, they perform it in their home. So, we try to um, 
get close to, to the student because uh, in our opinion we have to start with them to educate people also about the adaptivity tool. Uh, we prepared also a video for students, a tutorial. Uh, so, and we will uh, like to, to increase this uh, project with students. Now we start only with uh, the European schools in Europe, but the idea is to extend this project also to other uh, schools in other countries. Thank you, Georgia. Uh, I don't know if we have time for more questions because the plan was to finish at uh, 11. So, Wolfgang? Yes, I think we, we should take the time to answer more questions. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, in the QA, one of the last questions is about the resolution. Of, uh, of the cells of 10 by 10 square kilometers. So the question is if, the, if there are only average values uh, for this grid or uh, are there also distribution variance data available for each uh, cell? So uh, if you are thinking about Radon uh, map, uh, we have the uh, arithmetic mean, the standard deviation, the arithmetic mean of the logarithmic, the standard deviation of the, um, uh, of the um, logarithmic. So we have a set of statistics. So also in the cell, we have the standard deviation. So we have the variance. Uh, for uh, the other maps, uh, like um, the uranium, tonic, potassium, we we don't have the, the map of uh, uncertainty because we use to interpolate this data, the orgi, ordinary krieging, but uh, we don't, we didn't include uh, the, the uncertainty of this uh, value estimated. So, Georgia, I think you answered it already or you, we discussed it already before, but there were some follow-up questions about if this should, can or should be used, uh, the atlas for this def to define the read on priority areas in the countries. So I think you answered it, but maybe yeah. you, <laughs> you yeah. meant you maybe I, comment again to this. I can uh, confirm that the purpose of this map was not uh, to identify the radon priority area. That is something that the national country should do. And the, if the country can do it also using other parameters that are known in the radon. So it's something um, different that it's up to the national authorities. This map was uh, to have something harmonized at the European level, something uh, that uh, mostly reflect the geogenic condition. As you can see this uh, European map of uh, arithmetic mean of uh, the radon, and you can see, you can recognize the, you can put the uranium map and the indoor radon map, and you can recognize where we have high uranium uh, concentration, you can find high radon at ground floor because the ground floor reflects most the geology. But the risk and the radon priority area, it's another stuff. And also the estimation of the risk is another too. And then I also can say that the risk, property risk is associated with a singular house. So the risk is another concept that you have to measure in your house. Yeah, thanks, uh, Georgia. And I think probably this is the last question. I mean, we appreciate it. We are taking a lot of your time today. <laughs> uh, but this is this question is uh, about uh, mitigation. So uh, the, the participant is uh, trying to point out that the, the, the final goal of uh, everything regarding radon is to reduce the levels. 
So uh, he's asking if there are any thoughts how to improve the situation about rhythm mitigation in Europe. I, I know that this question probably deserves uh, probably one workshop <laughs> to tackle this question, but what is your opinion, Georgia, about, about this? <clears throat> My opinion is that, uh, of course, all our work go in the direction of reducing the exposition of the, the public. So if uh, we do the atlas that uh, we sensibilize the public and then the public it's a, take care about the radon issue. And then if they found high concentration, they will go ahead to mitigation. This is our purpose. At the long term, it's to this code of also cancer that radon is one of the 10 cancer issue in the European, new European code. So it's very important because it's a, a major causes of lung cancer. So it's something that people should take care and also the national authority are taking care of it with the Radon Action Plan. And also in the Radon Action Plan will be also indicate the measure for mitigation. So each country also address to the necessity of mitigate and also in, above all in workplaces where the directive is uh, very strict and there you have to follow some uh, uh, some more strict rule to mitigate so it's... okay thank you okay thank you very much uh... Valeria and Jose for asking the questions and Georgia for your answers to these questions. It was quite interesting and I hope there will be more opportunities to, to discuss uh, the impact of the Atlas on the European and also on the national level. Before we close the webinar, I've got one more slide uh, which I try to share now. And this slide is on the on future activities of of ERA. Um, there will be, and I hope there will be this uh, European Reading Week uh, as an in-person event. Uh, we plan to have the European Reading Week in October in Switzerland, and um, on Monday and Tuesday there will be a training course on reading protection in buildings. On Wednesday afternoon, we plan to have the ERA workshop and the topic is international collaboration on radon. There will be speakers from WHO, from medical associations, from the Indoor Air Quality Association, Building Association, IEA, European Commission, from CAST. So this, there will be particularly all international organizations that deal with radon will be invited to participate to this workshop and to and to discuss uh, possibilities to improve the collaboration between uh, these different uh, uh, institutions and associations and the role ERA could play on with this. After the ERA workshop, there will be the General Assembly of ERA and then in the evening, the ERA cocktail, which will be hopefully kind of uh, after Corona party and we will very much appreciate to, to be together again and to have a drink. On Thursday and Friday, there's the ROOMS workshop. ROOMS is a very uh, specific workshop which is dedicated to uh, building protection. It's dedicated to prevention and mitigation of buildings. And experts on these topics uh, will exchange their experience uh, at this workshop. You will you see the link uh, to the European Radon Week. Uh, there you get more information. You also have the possibility to register either for all three events or for all five days or just for for one uh, of this. Um, this is quite long, this link. So if you just uh, Google the European Radon Week uh, 2021, you will get there. We also plan to have the European Radon Day again this year on the 7th of November. 
And finally, I just want to point out that uh, there will be the election of the executive committee of ERA in September this year. So if you're a member of ERA, uh, and if you're interested to get involved in the work of ERA, if you want to be a member of the executive committee, please put forward your nomination and then we'll see if you if you are elected. Um, the election will be, as I said, in, in September um, and will be approved by the General Assembly in October. Okay, that's all from me now. I think we'll nearly really get now to the end of this webinar. Well, can, Anything? Uh, sorry? Yeah. So, sorry, just uh, uh, two, two announcements that came in the chat. Uh, very very fast. Uh, one is about the uh, ERA is uh, co-organizing some events at the Recomet uh, conference next September, and also uh, Mate from Prague was uh, saying that yeah, if he, if they can organize the conference, the Garden conference in Prague, uh, maybe there will be a space also to talk about the about the atlas. This just uh, came in the in the chat. There is, all this information is available on our website. Okay, thank you, Jose, yeah. and uh, be invited to this uh, events as well. Okay, I think that's all now. And um, just once more, many thanks to everyone, in particular to, to Georgia and Mark, for being available for this uh, webinar and for giving the presentation. Also, many thanks to Valera and Jose for uh, uh, channeling the questions and asking the questions to, to Georgia and Mark and. Well, many thanks to all of you who attended to this webinar, who asked the questions, who made it uh, lively, and uh, it was quite an interesting discussion. And I hope that we can continue this discussion at the European Radon Week um, in October, and I'm looking forward to seeing you there. Have a nice day and goodbye. Thank you, bye-bye. Goodbye, Mark. Thank you, bye-bye. Ciao. -bye.